nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pit exit is green. Pit exit Welcome is green. Welcome everybody Start to a brand new lap. season for the Ligier European Series. It's season five of this fabulous championship, which provides the uh, entry, if you like, to the ladder system of the ACO rules type racing. And once you've performed well in the Ligier European Series, whether that be in the GT derived cars, the JS2Rs, or the prototypes, the JS. Uh, P4s, there is scope then for you to move on into something like the Michelin Le Mans Cup, or indeed you can do a double step into the European Le Mans series as well. Many though are back again for another season of this Ligier European series because it takes in such great venues such as this, the Barcelona the uh, Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya which is where we are this weekend bright and early Saturday morning due for a 9 o'clock start and the only downside about this whole year is that you've got the same two voices calling um, pretty much all of the races. Me, Johnny Palmer, and the editor of DailySportsCar.com, Graham Goodwin. Good morning, GG. Yeah, it's tragic, isn't it, really? But, uh, well, no, but Fred, we've got early dramas there for one of the JS 2 rs That's Cindy Gouda. It is, and she was going very well in... Oh, that, that was very odd. Trying to get some heat in the tyres, yeah. presumably, and going down into the first corner. It's the exit of that, and then the twist back again through the left-hander at turn two, and the rear has swapped ends. Well, it's relatively cool, I suppose, compared to when these cars were last out on track. Two qualifying sessions virtually back-to-back -back yesterday evening, and one driver required in each. So it will be... Everyone's been kind of designated a starting driver, and for Team Virage, the 66 car, it is Jeronimo Berrio, one of three Colombians on the grid this year, joined alongside by Inter Europol Competition's loan car for Roman Fahre, and Roman is doing the full race, and will do so late, likewise later on today as well. Then you've got Hayden Chance in the second of the Team Virage cars, alongside Ian Aguilera, a returnee for RLRM Sport. Dylan Young, the Australian for smart driving with Eco Segre and ANS Motorsport. Recovery of Cindy Goudet's car continues. It's going to take a the toe, I think, as well, Johnny. Yeah, there. quite possibly. Uh, so, therefore, we've probably got a bit more time to give you the full grid instead. So, the Monza Garage SRL entry for Jamie Winslow will start number uh, in seventh position for car 71. Then it's Ben Kaisley for Nielsen Racing in the number four car. Eighth ahead of Lucas Medini and Andre Vieira for Team Virage and ASM Motorsport. You're quite right that the rescue vehicle number one is towing that car delicately out. We've also got a drama for one of the Pegasus racing cars, I think that is, the number 16. That's Yuka Tanaka's car, and he's waving for assistance as well. Yeah, I so believe. Tanaka was the next name I was going to reel off because he was due to start 11th and may well have to start now at the back of the field. Clement Moreno for ANS Motorsport will start from pole position in the JS2Rs, car number 31, alongside what should have been Cindy Goudet. She's likely now to start from the rear row for M Racing. Matteo Pianazzola for Iron Links by LR Motorsport ahead of the two Le Duce Arb entries for Sita Van Meert. That was a very late deal to get Sita in alongside Jacques Nicolet, so they'll be sharing a car. Antoine Lepescu in the second Le Dussard cars, and then two more Pegasus racing machines for Julian Schell and German driver Louis Stern. So, uh, Cindy Huda, who, by the way, initially set pole position time for race two, but lost that with, I believe, an infringement um, that was judged overnight. Uh, she's now way making her way back towards the back of this pack, but still, Yuka Tanaka uh, gesturing for assistance the pegasus racing team on pit lane johnny uh, looking aghast at uh, that issue 16 can you advise us if you can rejoin the race has already begun by the way we've got a green flag immediately into a yellow but the hour has started to tick by it's one hour we don't bolt any time on these days that became the new rule from last year and yuki tanaka's just got no forward momentum in the twisting tail and has to pull to the left-hand side not far away from uh, one of the overbridges there yeah, the that's JS2Rs the run, that did the run well into turn 10 therefore yeah the, 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 the js2rs did well to avoid that actually yeah, it, is the, it is the running to turn 10 yeah so run it at the end of the second timing sector what you can't see just above yuki tanaka's head is an absolutely massive overbridge that is currently being constructed here 
at Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. Something like 50 million euros being ploughed into this track yeah. from the local government, regional government, in an attempt, basically, to retain the Spanish Grand Prix. Indeed, under threat, of course, from a, a fashionable street race in the streets of Madrid. It's a huge amount of work going on in the paddock, with grandstands in the pits complex. Roadways being relayed, as uh, we found out to our cost in one or two of the sessions, with some of the tarmac not being properly sealed and ending up, for the most part, all over the race cars. Happily, not the track itself, but um, on the access roads. But uh, will be some time before this gets sorted out. That is, of course, allowing Cindy Gouday the opportunity to catch this, the tail of this, uh, this group. And this is going to be particularly costly to Yuki Tanaka because we've started the race now. So yeah, he, he's going to go lap down here and there's still point. no recovery underway. Yeah, well, they're clearly giving uh, Yuki ample time to start the car. You have to bear right, you have to bear right, follow the leading car on the right. The leading car being a Cupra. And it, it stays manager, well over to the right hand direct, side. And then swoops into the reprofiled turn 10. We were using this configuration of circuit last year. Slightly earlier in the year by a matter of weeks, uh, this meeting compared to last. But still, very concerned looks, as you might imagine, from Pegasus Racing. Yeah, indeed. There was David Cusinel there. Yeah, who has shared a car with Yuki in the past. That's not the plan for this year. No. Cosanel sharing with Julien Schell in the JS2Rs instead. And yes. Yuki Tanaka uh, is going to be a solo driver. Yeah, Julien, the team principal of Pegasus Racing, and no mean driver himself, it's safety car now. That will be just for Safety allow. car deployed, safety car deployed. All cars have to stay in line. It's an interesting message because they're already two by two, of course, now for what was meant to be the start of the race. All cars have to stay in line. It's a safety car. It's a safety car. So the lead car's pulling off. Because and I, then that's I not assume, the safety car. Uh, indeed. Not in the pit. Oh. There's, there's a lead car, which I know is a pace car, but uh, in all ACO rules regulations, it's quoted as the leading car, even as high as the World Endurance Championship. Ah, now, they have, now, this may be just confusion. They have followed the leading car down pit lane. Yeah, which sometimes you get, if there's a start line incident and there are cars strewn across the racetrack, this is, a, again, part of a regulation sometimes to bring the cars down pit road. Of course, Yuki Tanaka is, sto is stopped on the back section of the circuit. Here is the safety car. That's the Nissan GTR. They've, I think they've made the mistake, but it's a safe mistake to make. Uh, they followed the leading car, the Cupra, into pit lane, but actually the safety car is a completely different kettle of fish. And Yuki Tanaka's car is now out of the way, but I'd sooner this happen and cars be led down pit road than to be released onto a racetrack that's actually not clear and has cars stranded upon it. Jean appearing Kirby. to the Team Virage car, uh, to garage, I should say. And Julien Gerby, who's the team manager, team co-owner, and I caught quick sight there of Theo Mercuris, who we'll see later on sharing the Hayden Chance car, number one. Now, this may well just be this single lap on the safety car now with Yuki Tanaka, Johnny, uh, getting pretty rapidly towards a place of safety. We'll find out, I'm sure, later what went awry with that issue. These cars have been remarkably reliable over the years that you and I have been talking about. This cracking little first step on the European Le Mans Series package. We've been watching over the weekend the next step, of course, later this afternoon. Uh, you'll see qualifying and the race for the Michelin Le Mans Cup and then the European Le Mans Series qualifying today and then the race tomorrow and in that race Gillian Henrion is uh, going to start his campaign for a third consecutive title on each step of that ladder that's quite a remarkable story yeah Mimir, really? Mimir really? Stefan Lashier's champion here uh, already with a uh, really good run in the Asia Le Mans Series over the winter of course, only on winning the championship in Michelin Le Mans Cup last year with the guy we just caught sight of, Julien Gerby. And, uh, yeah, terrific success in Ligier European Series in 2022, going on to 11 wins, 12 podiums, 12 pole positions. That was a clean sweep across all of the races for Henri And he is a real star, unearthed, in fact, by this very championship, the Ligier European Series. So who will be the next... 
Guylian Henriot, we wonder, over the next few years. Uh, she is still only 21 years old and silver rated, so hot property potentially for some big teams in the future. I have to say, uh, Geronimo Berrio's decision it was to come in via, via the uh, lead car, if you like, and of course everybody else behind had to react. But, you know, from a 17 year old who's not done a great deal of sports car racing, it was the safer option. What we must remember now, of course, is that virtually every car in this race has already made a pit stop. Yeah. So that could well confuse Graham and I. But if we remember that everyone starts on one rather than zero, uh, we're looking at for a mandatory pit stop and the pit lane window opens 27 minutes into this race, of which we've already had, by the way, seven minutes of it. Two members of the family Nicolet behind this uh, effort. Jack Nicolet we'll see later in the race as they go uh, about to go green here. Pierre Nicolet just on his shoulder, son of. So over the line they go, and Geronimo Berrio will lead a first racing lap in the number 66 Team Virage car from Roman Favre in the famous green and yellow colours of Inter Europol competition. There's already a potential change there's a lock up there from both cars so it shows that tires are very very cold and potentially brakes as well but they both stayed on the racetrack crucially through turns one two and three there were briefly yellow flags and again for what is the iron links car briefly leaving the circuit that's iron links by lr motorsports and starting that matteo pianazzola second who, generation racer um, his father, long-time gentleman driver in Ferraris, amongst others, and uh, did take to the escape road there, as instructed by the race director, by the look of things. If they do run wide at Turn 1 to prevent some of the issues we've seen in the past. Already getting feisty out there, Johnny. Number six car is under some pressure there. Do we know, by the way, which son Matteo of, of uh, whether it's Sergio or Gilberto? I think Pianet it's Sergio. Because they are brothers, the two. Uh, uh. So I don't know which Matteo is the offspring of. We need to check that. But uh, Sergio Pianazzola, with uh, certainly GTE experience in recent years in the European Le Mans series. Brief glimpse there of the number three car, Smart Driving's Dylan Young, Australian, who's sharing with uh, a Romanian driver, Alan Fulga, this year. So Fulga to take charge at roughly half distance. And also a glimpse of the 50 Le Dussab car of Antoine Lupescu, who's currently just outside the top three in JS2R. But the leader's back across the line to finish the first racing lap. That's three in the book and almost 10 minutes completed, Graham. Absolutely. Getting down to business here in this very new look field in terms of the drivers and for that matter some of the teams, Johnny. I count five teams racing in the Elysia European Series this year that we'll see later in the weekend in the European Le Mans Series. And that's another boost with the addition this year of the Nielsen Racing Team with a late deal. And Casey in their car at the moment. Just saw it going through shot by number four in Ligier's corporate colours at the moment. One of three cars that we will see a female driver aboard uh, in this race. And by the way, 18 cars starting uh, proceedings this weekend. But we are promised more to come in this season. And it deserves more. It's been entertaining. A great step on the ladder for this European Le Mans Series package. Hayden Chance in the number one car, the 17-year-old from Worcester in the UK. And... Uh, beginning in fourth position on the grid, so has stabilised there. In fact, possibly actually third, but uh, been, been overtaken now by Ian Aguilera with his greater experience. 77 just starting to scamper away for RLRM Sport. And the car very delicate on the brakes there, just squirming around. But Hayden controlled it nicely. Eco Segre tucked in behind. Frenchman, although born in Abu Dhabi. And that car is certainly applying pressure to the second of the Team Virage machines. Virage, of course, run with the number one because they were the championship winning team last year, but the drivers have completely changed. And Theo Mercurius, who we'll see later on, his father said, well, no pressure then, running with the number one on the side of the door. I have a feeling they'll do fairly well, those two. Indeed. Uh, by the look of things, Julian Schell making progress. He's up to third in chairs to R at the moment. So we'll watch the battling pack in the JSP4s. Both these classes of car, Johnny, powered by the same Ford-based V6, but in different states of tune. 
So more powerful, more aero, less weight for the JSP4s. JS2Rs, though, quite the little package, quite the little performance package. You know, you've commented, uh, commentated on these cars in endurance spec as well. Is that a problem for the number four car? Just taking an inside line there. And the 32 Verage car looking for a way through on the outside. Then the inside and is going to make that stick, I think. Yeah, good little move on the inside of Ben Caisley. The livery of the number four car looking very Le Dussard. That's, as I understand it, because Nielsen Racing have rented that car in fairly last minute and Le Dussard are effectively the, the Ligier main team, so it's still carrying those, those colour schemes. It remains to be seen, they're, they're in for the season it seems, but it remains to be seen whether they'll continue to rent or whether Nielsen will invest and uh, actually get their own car, but I'm sure there'll be a livery change in time for the next few race meetings. It's quite the battle here, isn't it? Uh, it almost looked like he got it done there in the 32. No, he has not. Now he may have done. Ben Caisley not making this easy. It's Lucas Medini who was looking for a way by. Medini much later on the brakes that time, and I think has made the move stick. We'll catch sight of them again in a moment. But the number one car in fourth for Hayden Chance, heading towards turn 14 for the sixth time. And the other thing that's not really getting too much further apart is the battle for the lead. So Jeronimo Berrio, despite his best efforts, cannot shake Roman Favre in the inter europol competition entry and that gap at the line has actually come down very slightly to 0.6 of a second now. Still these two battling away this time in the 32 crosses the line ahead a bit shaky under breaking Ben Casey is he going to go around the outside he is gets the inside line for turn two beautifully done cracking little battle here as they learn their craft learn this circuit and learn these cars Johnny. Yeah, the 32 car is an interesting one as well because on a very early entry list, both drivers were TBA and they became confirmed. It felt like uh, the latter portion of this week. I'm sure the deals uh, weren't quite as last minute as that, but we've got Lucas Medini doing the opening stint, the Colombian, 17 years old from Bogota, and will be joined by Aline Geshev of the UAE, both silver rated drivers so Kaisley on the outside of turn one Medini on the inside Medini had to really adjust his line there and I was worried that the team Virage car might actually start to suggest it's going to loop around even though there wasn't any contact uh, prototype cars don't like the racing line being tightened up at the last minute there but he dealt with it well and Medini still on the boot lid of Ben Kaisley Julian Shell up into second place in JS2R ahead of the toothy car behind the ANS Motorsport number 31 of Clever Moreno so stuck in early doors here this is what we want to see this season some bits of really good racing action in the Ligier European Series down through the seasons that we've been covering this Johnny so this bodes well this early on for some close racing to come this time Ben Casey appears to have got that done Kramer Barrow, meanwhile, uh, putting in fastest laps and the last two laps beginning to just edge away. It's still only, though, under a second. There's, what, eight seconds covering the top six in JSP4, and this is the battle between the number four and 32 for eighth place. And again, Kaisley has got ahead properly of Medina, but Medina may be just taking a, a little break from the battle, trying to just take the real peak temperature out of his tyres and then maybe looking to attack again. Meantime, Clement Moreno is about to be overtaken by one of the Pegasus cars. That's the 29 of Julian Schell. Nice, tidy manoeuvre on the brakes into turn five. It's a tricky corner because you're heading downhill and that descent continues right past where we had a bit of a, a welcome get-together at the start of the weekend, Graham. We did indeed. What a fabulous view it is from that... Uh Welcome centre, that uh, hospitality booth, uh, the great view of the end of this, the lap and of turns four, five and the run down up, uh, uh, uphill into six. So, that's overtake from Julian Schell. Seeing again there, we saw the way that he started that move, we'd previously seen the way he ended it, but uh, neatly done and Julian now under a second away from Matteo Pianzola, my apologies, stumbling this morning for the lead of JS2R. So 10 JSP4s circulating with the 
retirement of the number 16 right at the very start of the race. Seven JS2Rs. A couple of cars being pinged for track limits coming through sector three. That shouldn't affect them for the first discretion, but that will have been noted by the judges of fact around the racetrack. Ian Aguilera in third and Eco Segre in fifth position with the little orange disc appearing next to their name and their third sector. Great lap, though, for the race leader, Yeronomo uh, Berrio, with a 144.2, so that yes. serves to extend the race lead by, well, double as what it was, up to 1.4 now. Yeah, it's a very good lap from him. He's beginning to get his eye in, isn't he? That's an issue about track limits. Remember, same rules apply. doesn't matter whether or not you're a rookie or not. Same rules apply. They are here to learn. Uh, everybody here, whether or not they're experienced endurance racers and this is the level they've chosen or whether or not this is the entry level for them. We've got a battle for the lead in JS2R now for Julian Schell. I think that is going to the inside. That's the 18 in the 86. See to Van Mert in a colour scheme that's very similar to the Iron Lynx, uh, by the, uh, by that, the way. Well, that threw me, apologise. Yeah, but it, the 86 has a green roof and green rear bumper, whereas the Iron Lynx with the black roof, but it's uh, they're very minor differences, and that's going to fool us all the way through the season, I'm sure. But see to Van Mert, as I say, late name in to be the co-driver of Jacques Nicolet, who we've already caught sight of in pit road, so a second Le Dus Arb car and a very different colour scheme for 2024. Yeah. Great to see that. I know Jacques Nicolay was very pleased indeed to get young Sita aboard the car. So a record three female drivers to start the season. More power to them, and I'm hoping more to come as well across endurance racing. It's been quite the part of the scene. Side by side again here. Well, we might have thought Ben Casley had got out of this battle, but again, he falls behind Lucas Medina. So Medina marginally behind as they cross the line. Casley has the inside line this time for turn number one in car four. Medina's quicker, though, in the mid part and right over the curve through turn two. Can he get across the nose of Ben Casey? No, he can't. Into turn three. Terrific fight, this. This is great stuff. Turn after turn, lap after lap. And they're not quitting, are they? Casey comes out with the advantage again. Now Warning we'll... for car number six. Yeah, Ico Secre, uh, who is a solo driver, again, a 17-year-old, so just shows you the influx of 17, 18-year-olds into the Ligia European Series uh, this season. In fact, in the number one car, both Hayden Chance and Theo Mercurius will be doing their A-levels next week. Good grief. Uh, we had Logan Hanna handing in her dissertation for university on Thursday, just gone. A day early. I was mightily impressed with that. Despite there being a race week, maybe she just wanted to get it out of the way and th then concentrate it on the racing. And still, Jacques Nicolet hasn't handed in that physics paper from <laughs> 1964. <laughs> he was hoping that that, that was never going to be mentioned again, but he's still losing marks. <laughs> Well into the minus figures now. Turn five for the Iron Lynx car. Uh, of course, uh, Matteo Pianazzola under pressure from Julian Schell in the sky blue and white for Pegasus Racing. How far away is Clement Moreno? Well, he's right there, gnashing teeth and all in third position. Yeah, this has stayed close, hasn't it? We've had changes of position, not least, of course, from Julian Schell, who's been just gradually leapfrogging his way up this order now contesting the lead, but this group of four still very close together. And lots of strategy still to come here. Remember, still pit stops to come through, driver changes for some, but not all of these cars to come. So the pace will ebb and flow, and that, Johnny Palmer, is part of the beauty of sports car racing. And this significant step on the ladder to it replicates that beautifully with cars of pretty good performance and modest budget so four JS2R leaders effectively or the top four positions more accurately all on the main straight together and look in the background fifth and sixth places aren't that far away either the second Pegasus car for Lewis Stern and Sita Van Mert in the yellow Le Dussab car and Ben Kaisley is ahead again of Lucas Medina, but how long for, I wonder? It is only for eighth position, but it shows how dearly uh, these drivers want early championship points. Kaisley may well now be, to, be able to establish the number four 
into that eighth position. Looks to me like Clement Moreno is beginning to put Julien Schell under pressure here as well. He's not been dropped by the flying Frenchman. And if anything, I think that gap is coming down a little. There's the battling pair. Bit of a lock up there for the Virage car, the 32. This, though, is our race leader, Geronimo Berrio. And it's pulling away, Johnny. Gap almost up to three seconds now. Bit of a waggle there as he found where the grip gave up. It's uh, chatting to a couple of drivers about these little JSP4 Ligiers. We've got George King here, we've seen over the last seasons. He's here. Um, helmet bag in hand and waiting for another opportunity further up the ladder mm -hmm. chatting about the little Ligiers and uh, George describes this as a, you know, a really great training ground to learn you know, how to get into a downforce car how to get the best from that package look after the tyres learn the strategy game no doubt we'll see the young Brit back aboard a car soon worth saying as well as we watch this continuing battling JS2R Johnny but a key part of the package here is the encouragement that Ligier give to step up the ladder. And that comes with substantial financial incentive. Helping towards budget at the next stage for the champions uh, in each class, in the case of JS2R. Helping with the budget into JSP4 the following year. And in the case of the JSP4 champions, stepping up into LMP3. That's uh, a rather dusty... Look there, has the 32 been off? Well, it's further behind Ben it's Casey than I would want behind. to see. So I it's either been, been off around. or is it is it uh, not quite up to full song? It seems fine now. Yeah, there's there's gravel, gravel pouring out of it. Yeah, I think he's been around. So he'd already, uh, Lucas Medini, Medina we're talking about, already uh, braked himself a lap ago into turn five. So whether it was a similar error in an effort to overtake Ben Casey but showing evidence that the car has left the road and maybe just dropped a wheel or two into the gravel trap. It doesn't look very dusty. No, and, the... uh, it's not a significant delay, but obviously it's dropped a couple of seconds compared to Ben Casey. It's, what, six seconds on that lap. Uh, so he lost five seconds in sector two, and it uh, tends beyond that. Is that the 60 car running slowly? It is. That's our leader. Matteo Pianazzola is going nowhere fast and all of a sudden we have a lead change from, the of the car, from underneath the car there was something dropping from the, the rear the back of the car and there's now more smoke so Matteo Pianazzola may be wise to shut that off as quickly as possible to prevent further jack damage Julien Schell is the new JS2R leader therefore and Clement Moreno with the teeth around the front bumper the ANS motorsport car up to second no make that third because Antoine Lupescu has just got in between the two of them is that because pit stops should not have started yet we're about three minutes away no, no from the pit, pit stop yet. window so that was a genuine overtake for Lupescu on Moreno. So dramas in JS2R and whether or not that was a little bit of confusion as the 60 car checked up I think he was looking for a place of safety to park that car but it appears to be no immediate thing we'll maybe get another look at that now this is the wrong part spin. of the circuit that's a spin for oh that'll explain why Moreno's fallen behind Le Pesca. Is. that is Moreno and this was Pianazzola a moment or two ago coming checked. out of the sequence of seven and eight and there was just no power all of a sudden absolutely so the car perhaps trailing fluid certainly very smoky this is the drama that befell the 32 didn't spin just a trip through the gravel there i did wonder whether it might be something as innocuous as that but cost uh, cost medina six seconds as it turned out now we get to another aspect of sports car racing traffic is the leader, Geronimo Berrio, catches Sydney Goudet, deals with the M Racing JS2R very quickly and without delay. As the interior pull car behind him, Roman Favre is uh, now getting that challenge too. Yellow still out at turn nine for recovery of the previously race leading JS2R car of Matteo Piazzola. Another battle still here. This is the number six car of Eco Segre. 
ahead of the 71 of James Winslow. Safety car has been called, Johnny. That will be for that recovery, I'm sure. Recovery of Matteo Pianazzola's stranded car. So all of a sudden, all the hard work over the... It's not quite been the full 26 minutes, because remember, we only waved the green flags about six or seven minutes into the race. But for 20-odd minutes, Geronimo Berrio has been building that gap to nearly two and a half seconds, and that will evaporate completely back to Roman Favre. Ian Aguilera will be ready to pounce as well because he'd fallen a further seven and a half seconds further back in third position. And we're only 15 seconds away from the pit stop window opening. So we might be in a scenario here where the safety car goes out and there's nobody behind it because everybody instead has dived for the pit lane. Well, we're about to see. Here is the safety car, the impressive Nissan GTR. Well, thankfully, we aren't quite in that scenario yet because these cars had crossed the line a little too early for that pit window to have opened so they are going to have to wait obviously at a reduced pace this restricts them in terms of options though because i would have thought a seven minute pit window would have given you three laps or so as to which one you want to pit on well they're going to be forced into a later pit stop now within the window an early car that is in is the nielsen racing machine for ben casely though to hand over to scottish driver logan Hanna. it's just a replay of the number 60 car effectively retiring i think we can say here johnny as uh, recovery underway now of the stricken js to r of uh, matteo, matteo pazzola you, you're right just seems to be no go there for the car as he came out of the turn there was nothing there logan Hanna climbs aboard the number four ben casely assisting his teammates and the young Scots will rejoin this race. Minimum pit stop times apply, of course. In come the two leading cars in JS2R. My guess is it will be the whole field in JS2R that come down pit lane now. 29 from 50, 31, 18, 86 and 53. Predominantly silver-silver combinations, or indeed lone drivers. We've got many silvers uh, having doing just the the whole race as a single drive. The one exception to that is Yuki Tanaka, who's a bronze and doing the whole race, and therefore is entered into the AM division of JSP4. We have more AMs in JS2Rs, whether that be lo solo drives for a bronze or indeed a double bronze, and that means that you can spend less time in the pit lane. Uh, nothing's done too hurriedly because a lot of these teams and certainly drivers are are new to two driver uh, two driver cars so this uh, nature of switching at roughly half distance is relatively new for them and therefore all of these pit stops are timed from pit in to pit out rather than getting the pit stop done as quickly as possible yeah uh, the only jazz to our one that's not yet pitted that is still circulating is in uh, Sydney QD and that's because she's stuck in the train behind the safety car which are only clearing the final corner now the four car gets away do wonder how this might pan out for the four yes coming in early as now the jsp4 cars start to pit as it did indeed does sydney uh, sydney Goudet. and we're going to see i think the entire field just one car out of position that's the 44 asm motorsport car of andre vieira and they come Day in the purple JS2R and amongst the prototypes as the JS2Rs now start to leave pit lane. David Cosinelli it is who leads, uh, who leaves and is in the lead of this class. Logan Hanna, meanwhile, will be making her way around and can do so at some speed outside of the incident zone to catch the safety car, which is currently circulating with nobody behind it. There you go. That's what I uh, was semi-concerned about, and it, you know, it, it needs to be out there to temper the field. But I totally get what you're saying about the number four car because it, it didn't, it wasn't slowed down at all by the safety car initially because it didn't even have a chance to get in the train. Instead, uh, David Sven Thompson and whoever else making the call on the pit wall, it's going to lead the race. It, well, it, it got into pit road with zero delay then rejoins and must probably be one of the first cars. I and mean, it's running round now to try and catch up with the safety car, so it won't be the first car behind it, 
but a whole clutch of them are now pitting, having been delayed. Do they get any of these cars out of pit lane before Logan Hanna comes by? That's the, the key. Yeah. At the moment, I'm not sure they've got the time to do it. Yeah. Logan is going to be coming through turn 14 now. There is the safety car now with three of the GS2Rs behind. She's powering by the pits. I'm sure the number four car is going to lead this race. Can't see any cars re-emerging out of pit road on our tracker just yet because the time, the minimum reference time is still ticking by. Cindy Goudet already with dramas. She's, She's uh, past the uh, pits and now we start to hear cars firing. So Logan Hanna going into turns one and two and is now the first car listed on our timing screen. Hasn't yet got to the safety car, but will do fairly shortly in the next sector. The 66 car rejoining now. Geronimo uh, Berimo has got out and handed over to Pedro Moreno, his fellow Colombian teammate. So first and second on the road become what will be second and third now, leaving the pit lane because this car, the number four, now leads the race, still with the safety car out on track. There you go. So that was just the opportunity that arose because of the timing of the safety car and the opening of the pit window. Nielsen Racing opting to pit the car immediately, and that has propelled Logan Hanna uh, from the back of the field in JSP4 to the lead at this stage with 27 and a half minutes remaining, Johnny. 44 car, the final car to clear pit lane. Uh, does so now, so we are shortly going to have the entire field in line astern. There is the uh, safety car still just with JS2R, still waiting by the way for the recovery of the number 60 car, so it's going to be a little while yet. That's, That's surely then locked in gear, is it? Because it's proving to be very, very we difficult and troublesome to be recovered, that car. Uh, they, I'm guessing, are going to have to do a straight lift on that fairly shortly. The 29 JS2R is tucked in behind the safety car. That's David Cosanel now leading JS2Rs, but not leading overall. So Cosanel and Clement Moreno in the ANS Motorsport car caught in behind the safety car and, and obviously unable to overtake. I, I think the picture we just saw there was of the young Belgian driver. Sita, is it Van Mert? Van Mert, yes. But I thought Jack Nicolay started that race. Um, no, Sita. Sita, Sita did. Began right, yet. OK, fine. Indeed. My apologies. So Jack Nicolay is now aboard the car. No, you're right, because we saw in the pits. We, we saw, did. We saw Absolutely Jack right. uh, watching on, yes. So and Jack Nicolay, by the way, rejoins the race. Where he is in fifth place. So the car handed over in good order there by Sita van Meer. Yeah, you're absolutely right, that was Sita. Yeah. Chatting to engineers at Le Dussard. Now on the flatbed. So the race order, Johnny. Logan Hanna leads after that uh, strategy call from Nielsen Racing. Team Virage and Pedro Moreno uh, in second place in the 66 car that, that led from the starts. Roman Favre in the number seven in Europol car third. Monza Garage SRL with Chun Ting Chu is fourth in 71 car. The number one from Virage, Tiana Kuris is fifth. RLR M Sports in Aguilera, solo drive in the 77 car, sixth. 32 of Team Virage of Alin Geshev is seventh. Smart driving from Romania, the number three car of Alin Fulga is eighth. Ico Segre in the ANS Motorsports JSP4, ninth in the number six car and the 44 ASM Motorsport of Andre Vieira. In JS2R, with the lights still on on the safety car, the race is led by Pegasus Racing's 29, now in the hands of David Casanel. Clement Moreno, second in ANS Motorsport's 31. Pegasus is second car, Louis Stern, uh, eight, the number 18 is in third. Then it's the pair of the Duzab car, the 50 car in the hands of Noah de Kuna and Jacques Nicolet, as we mentioned previously, in fifth place in the 86. And the final running car is another JS2R. It's the 53M racing car in the solo hands of C uh, Cindy Goudet. It's this a lap down, by the way, because of the issue at yeah, the start of the race. Yes, indeed. This uh, restart is going to be quite interesting because uh, the yellow is removed at turn nine, by the way, because Matteo Pianazzoli's car has now been recovered. And it's not that car, by nope. the way. It is yellow, but with the black roof, in the case of Pianazzoli, with his iron links machine, 
Uh, the similar paint scheme carried by number 86, Le Dussard, now with Jacques Nicolet at the wheel. Surely, once everyone's bunched up behind the safety car, are they going to wave through the JS2Rs? So I'm that, not that we sure have we have wave by here. I'm no. not sure we All do. Right. It's going to make it interesting, isn't it? Because we've got the whole bunch of JSP4s behind the whole bunch of JS2Rs. It's an interesting enigma here. And Logan Hanna has just tagged on to the back of what is presumably Cindy Gouday, as you say, a lap down, but she should be the final car. Now, I can't see Cindy there, so Cindy, by by the quirk of being off the, the lead lap, will be further back down the train. So it's Jacques Nicolet, which is the last of five cars yes. from JS2R that make up this bulk immediately behind the safety car. We're looking for the bright purple car of Sydney Goudet, and I think she is either in the middle of or at the rear of the main body. She's towards the rear of it, the number 53 car. There, fact, there it was. Yeah, just with the ASM Motorsport GS, uh, P4 behind her of Andre Vieira. So one thing I would say is Cindy's going to have a relatively calm restart. Yes. Whereas Logan Hanna, as the overall race leader, will now have Pedro Moreno in the number 66 Team Virage car right on her rear bumper. And the third place car now, having run second for a long time within this Roman Favre uh, for inter Europol competition. And the difficulty will be for Logan, how quickly can she get away with a lot of the track taken up by five JS2Rs? Well, if uh, she's relatively inexperienced with dealing with traffic so far in the racing career, this will certainly uh, educate very swiftly indeed, trying to slice her way through marginally slower and not really a great deal slower GT derived cars first of all but here if she is able to do that there are big advantages to be drawn Absolutely. if you can be brave and clean through traffic yeah because she is in the unique position of having to defend only uh, from the rear rather than to attack the car in front in her own class she just needs to find a pathway forward simple when I'm sitting here commentary booth isn't it not so simple when you're sitting at the wheel of a Ligier JSP4 safety car lights are currently still on I think we expect them to go out this time as they come into the third timing sector another shot of the Nissan we'll be able to tell you whether or not the safety car is coming in this time to wait a little bit longer for nope, that. No, nope, I think I think not. All right, the safety uh, car's light beam is still flashing away. Pedro Moreno, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with that name, another driver to be uh, coaxed towards the Ligier European Series for 2024 of Colombia, but uh, won a single-seater Formula 4 championship in Central America last year, took him to places like Mexico City and Puebla, so... Certainly, the single-seater experience very useful when you're driving an aero-dependent car such as a JSP4. And Formula 4 is proving to be a really rich feeding ground for young talent, isn't it? Around the world. But we shouldn't forget that Logan Hanna has won GB4 races in the UK. A couple of years ago in 2022, took victory at Donington Park, also a podium at Silverstone during that season. So... She also coming from a single-seater background, and this is going to be a fascinating fight now with, as I say, traffic uh, not a, a commonplace uh, situation in their racing careers to this point, and that's another reason to get involved. And Logan Hanna making it pretty blatant to me yesterday, saying, I want to go to Le Mans, and I want to win Le Mans. So that is the target at the moment, and she's with a great team in, able to, in order to do that. Has known Sven Thompson for many years, because I think Sven used to race with her dad, in things like he'll love you for that. I know. Love you for that. Oh, it was a few way, years ago. By the way, I know Sven would love me to tell you this, uh, so I'm going to. Um, he's now a certified FIA bronze driver. Really? He is. He's so, uh, ended with an international C license. He's had to make sure that if, they're aware of his existence. Absolutely. If you're looking to make him a big money offer, it seems out there. He Indeed. Would gratefully yeah. take that call. Yeah. It wouldn't ring twice. I can tell you. He's that. one of those sneaky bronzes that's more like a bronze plus. Or very much a bronze minus. Lights out the safety car. Safety car <laughs> Change the subject. Lap. Safety car in this lap. Here we go. So in, into turn 10. It's one of those pennies, those bronze pennies you've forgotten at the bottom of the pocket for oh, tracking you've yeah. not used for ages. Yeah, all right. Morning, Sven. 
sure he's uh, thoroughly enjoying this so far, but uh, which goes. twist and turn will this race take next, I wonder? With five JS2Rs not leading on the timing screen, but they are leading on the road right behind the safety car. Then you've got the overall leader, car number four for Logan Hanna and Nielsen Racing. Green Remember these JS2Rs? Flag, it's, uh, they've got their own battle as well. That's uh, Logan Hanna and assisting her through is not going to be the first on their agenda, but she's got a great restart here and has got a bit of a gap there to the number 66 car at the restart. So Logan Hanna starts the process now of threading her way through. 66 car, though, comes to the inside. He's going to take the position, I think, on the run down to the first turn. And Logan Hanna has lost two positions there. Roman Favre get gets through as well, but there was also a lead change in JS2R because it's now Clement Moreno who has got ahead of David Cosinel for Pegasus Racing. That was the RLR car running wide, I think, through the first sequence of corner. So Ian Aguilera loses places as well. Aguilera was right in behind Roman Favre at the start of that race and has lost places to Theo Mikuris for Team Virage, to Chunting Chu of Monza Garage, and Aguilera slots back in to fifth position. Pedro Moreno, it is, that still leads this race. And he's only got one of these cars, I think, to clear. And then he's in clear air, Johnny. So it's been a cracking restart from the previous race uh, leader. From Team Virage, number 66 car. Logan Hanna got really shuffled back there. So Pedro Moreno, Roman Favre, Tio Mercuris, one, two, three. But still working on clearing traffic and do so now. We have a Moreno leading both classes right now, so that's a, a tad confusing as well this early on in the, in the season. But Pedro Moreno for Team Virage leads JSP4. Clement Moreno, the Frenchman for ANS Motorsport, is now leading in the number 31 JS2R as the 71 and the 77 cars, looking like they're very similar teams, but in fact not. The 71 is the Monza Garage entry and RLR M Sports 77 and a, a switch around, so Aguilera now ahead of Chuting Chu. No, it was the other way around, they got to Chu ahead of Aguilera. It was Aguilera that ran wide, I think, at the first turn. He did, I think, follow instructions on rejoining. Over the line goes the race leader, Pedro Moreno, 0.8 of a second back to Roman Favre in the green and yellow of inter Europol competition, but he's got major uh, uh, pressure from behind from Theo Mikuris, again coming from a radical background in the UK. And the Team Virage car looking very racy at this restart. Gap back to Shu, who's just got ahead of Ian Aguilera. Clement Moreno in the JS2Rs starting to establish his lead over Noé da Cunha in the Le Douce Arb entry number 50. Which means that the Pegasus racing car that led coming into this safety car period is shuffled back to third yeah. in the hands of Daphne Cusinel. Just wonder whether or not Logan Hanna's run down to that first turn may have been bought a bit by traffic. She did seem to get initially a very good restart, but then lost pace coming down towards turn one. Well, I noticed that actually Pedro Moreno was hanging back a little bit, whereas Logan Hanna was more concerned about keeping the and gap. maybe had to check up a and, little. And, yeah, it was possibly a little too close at the restart, but there are rules and regulations about how much you can allow that gap to grow. I may have been wrong because car 77, that is in Aguilera, is under investigation for not respecting the race director's instructions. That will be at turn one. When it ran wide, wide. There, there is this kind of escape road. It's uh, all about, there's been a bit of a squirrely moment there for the second place car of Roman Favre, the anti Europol car. Well, there was an awful lot going on at that point. Uh, this is uh, a long time ago, is it not? No, the 32. No, it's oh, a happened. similar similar moment. There was, it was 32 again, there, wasn't it? Was. it? And still quite a bit of smoke coming out of the back of that car. Now, whether that was just tyre smoke and the locker... It looked like it was to me. Right. He was very deep into that corner. So that's Aline Geshev, who is being tutored this weekend by George King. Normally, James Winslow is uh, his coach, but James busy racing this weekend, so he's brought George back to uh, the uh, European Le Mans Series paddock and to Ligia European Series, where George raced, it, raced last year. Remains to be seen whether he finds an opportunity later on in the season. Great little dice this for the lead of the race between Pedro Moreno for Virage, Roman Favre for Inter Europol competition, and the second Virage car of Theo Mikuris, who, as I say, looks faster on the road than Roman Favre, but needs to work that opportunity to get ahead of the Inter Europol car. 
Is it Tiro Paul going to be able to get in amongst what has been a dominant couple of seasons from Team Virage? If that's the case, Johnny will have plenty to look forward to from the remaining races this season. With us at all part of one of the European Le Mans Series races this year, and of course with that race on test day at Le Mans 24 hours. Yeah, a real highlight once again this year. Uh, of course, not on the exact weekend of Le Mans, but you do get to race on the eight and a half mile circuit, the exact one that we race the following weekend, and with all of the same, with all of the cars that are, are in sessions elsewhere in that test day Sunday. Trouble for the 32 car here. That car is slowing. What car we saw with what we thought was out braking. 31 car just going running wide there in the lead of JS2R. That's allowed De Kuna to close that gap again. So we've got a real battle underway in both classes now, Johnny, with just 13 minutes to go. Clement Moreno, one of the drivers to be retained in his car, he is the solo driver, whereas behind the number 50 has been taken over by Noé de Cunha, who took over from Antoine Lupescu. Lupescu, remember, taking advantage of a spinning car in his stint and gaining a position. Got him up to second, and then with Cosinel's not great getaway after the safety car. Oh, a big moment for Clement Moreno. Loses him completely on the brakes and straight into the gravel. That's what pressure can sometimes result in. Noah de Cunha's mere presence perhaps created that moment for Moreno. Yeah, I think he was watching his mirrors and suddenly realised he's missed his braking point. It's yellow's now at turn one. Now, what is going to be required from race control to manage that incident. I think you're exactly right, Johnny. If we see that again, he'd have been aware of the the it is an upper. Can we watch it again here? Can we down into the braking zone? We're not going to see that for the moment. I'm sure we will in just a moment or two's time. He'd have been watching the mirrors to see which way the 50 car was going to go. There's the 32 we think in trouble on pit lane for Alim Geshev. Touch wide for Roman Favre that at turn 12. So is that going to be an opportunity for Theo McCurry? He looks to his mirrors and I think he's just realised he's missed his breaking point. Yeah, and off skates Clement Moreno. And previously there was a big wiggle into turn 10. That was on the previous lap to his Maybe eventual he was mistake. In some breaking trouble. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't quite that simple. I mean, it's very difficult to tell from where we sit as to whether that was driver error or an increasing problem with the car. But Moreno, the end result is that he falls into the gravel at the first corner and we're under safety car again for the final 11 minutes. What I was wondering was, just before they hit the safety car line, could Theo Mercuris slot into second place? Because Favre looked like he'd made a slight error at turn yep. 12, but they are still in the same order. Virage into Europol competition and then the th second Virage car in third. There is an escape lane if they can get it through the gravel. It's a matter of how quickly we can get uh, intervention there. So I would hope we can get back to green flag moving before the end of this race. That could be quite exciting because, of course, it's going to bottle everybody up again. Yeah. But this time with the JSP4s at the front of the queue. Indeed. Yeah, so things have flipped around and the safety car will stay out on track, not necessarily to enable the JS2Rs to catch up, but if that happens before we reach the end of this safety car period, then uh, once again, everybody will be together and it should actually bunch up the gap between Noé de Cunha, who looks fast, and David Cosinel for Le Dussab and Pegasus, respectively. Lewis Stern in the second Pegasus car on for a podium at this stage. This is quite tricky because the gravel's rather deep down at Turn 1. They don't, obviously don't want to create further damage and problem for the number 31 car and ANS Motorsport, who are here with uh, a good amount of cars this weekend. I think it's three in the support pack at Paddock, so they yeah. have a car entered into Le Mans Cup as well. Should be two. Uh, unfortunately, one there's damaged in testing, but I think we'll see the number six car back. And you'll see, of course, the Le Mans Cup uh, action qualifying and the race with Johnny, with myself, and with Steph Wentworth later today. And uh, the Le Mans Cup race is later today, of course, as well. It being in its traditional slot of a Saturday evening, we start the coverage at 20 past five, so we'll still be racing to, uh, beyond seven o'clock this evening in the opening round for the Michelin Le Mans Cup. So, wide sweeping arc as they recover. 
the 31. I think he's gonna, he is going to recover to the track. That's good news. If we can get this car running again, at least to get this car finished. We deserve that after a fine run to that point. Hopefully it's not a car problem. It was just a miscalculation. Brief Hello. glimpse in the garage there of Ben Kaisley, who got out of the number four car to hand over to Logan Hanna. And Clement Moreno back in the race trying to just wiggle that car as much as possible to drop the gravel not on the racing line but that is tough to do as you I have say, to say the 32 cars rejoined as well oh good so oh, okay yes Alin Geshev the driver from the UAE then is back into the race as well so we'll wait to see just how long we're going to get here uh, with the recovery crew getting back to a place of safety. They will go around one more time, Johnny, at least. They do need to keep that gap closer than that to the safety car, though. Can't be hanging back this far. Only one of those lights have gone off. Yes. Should that position be taken. So Pedro Moreno needs to get a wiggle on here. Well, this was the sort of theory, I think, from Pedro at the other safety car restart when he hung, hung back slightly from the Nielsen car of Logan Hanna, and that gave him the slightly better route into the traffic there. Nothing flashed up on our screen that the gap then was too big, but uh, I know what you're saying about upping the pace to stick with the safety car yeah. until the lights are extinguished, Correct. and that won't happen at turn 10 anyway. He's doing that now, so... Obviously got us on the radio there for it. did. Yeah. As Tune everybody in. does. I think so. Up and down the field, they've got uh, their commentary radios tuned in to me and him. They often tell us how much they're enjoying our mistakes. Yes. I was going to say, if, if they're trying to do it for kind of tactical insight, forget it. Absolutely. We're going to send you all the way down the cul-de-sacs. And it's not intentional. Just... Most, most race series, that's the Christmas tape. And they put together kind of two or three minutes of hilarious the bloopers. Outtakes. Yeah, the bloopers. We have a season of bloopers. We just have the high, it's basically just the entire race. The highlights the tape are the bits we got right, and that <laughs> uh, stems to about 20 <laughs> seconds. Lights are off on the Nissan GTR, Johnny, and we're about to go back to green flag racing for what is six and a half minutes of this uh, first race of the season here in Barcelona. Yeah, so there's not a lot of time to be thinking too much here about racecraft uh, because a handful of laps to decide the first race of the first heat of the season. Each round at uh, the various venues called a heat in the Ligier European Series and divided into two separate hour-long races with uh, the usual points on offer, 25 for a win. Heading into the final corner then, of this safety car lap, Cindy Goudet's 31 car, unfortunately, back in pit. Sorry, that was the Moreno car, wasn't it? Moreno, uh, who brought the car in from the gravel and into pit road. So that looks like it may go no further, but we're under green now. And what about Roman Favre? Well, it'll actually be Theo Mercuris who sparks Favre into life, and Favre down the inside to take the race lead. Almost contact between the two Virage cars. Pedro Moreno certainly not going to take that lying down as Favre establishes himself for into Europol competition into the race lead. And I was very concerned, certainly, by Theo Mercuris and his late braking, but he had it all in hand, and he now draws level with Pedro Moreno and will bag second position from his teammate. Now, these Tim Virage cars are certainly run as separate entities, so they don't want to hit each other, certainly, but they are out for as many points as they can get. The one versus the 66, and Mercuris now ahead of Pedro Moreno. He wasn't exactly caught napping at the restart, but he'd hung back for a little while, then got much closer to the safety car, and in the end, didn't get anywhere near as good a start as Roman Favre, and as it turned out, Theo Mercurius in the number one car. Slight gap emerging between Pedro Moreno in third and Chuting Shu in the Monza garage car, and Ian Aguilera looking to get by the equally day glow yellow machine for that fourth position. Cracking stuff that for Roman Favre, it's a beautiful move, well executed. And by the way, uh, kudos here to a number of these drivers. We've seen wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. It was a really tricky combination, one, two, three. I don't think we've seen any contact at all, Johnny, in any of those moves. But uh, that for Roman Favre, he delivered it beautifully. Don't think uh, Pedro Moreno was expecting that at all. The 19-year-old Frenchman with experience last year of the Alpine Cup another one-make series with VPS racing, finished third in that championship 
And that's provided presumably a really good bedrock now for the silver graded driver to head into ACO rules racing with the Ligier European Series. And Roman Fafra has, I bet, left a bit of meat on those tyres as well in order to lean on them in the closing stages. 25 laps so far completed for Roman Fafra. And then the duo of Team Virage, Theo Mercure is ahead of Pedro Moreno. Shooting Shoe, the Taiwanese driver for Monza Garage SRL. The team just up the road from the Italian venue, the Royal Park. And the Monza Garage car going strongly, but that's the next one under pressure, I would say, from both Ian Aguilera and Eco Segre. Meanwhile, in JS2R, it is still Noé de Cunha leading David Cosinel. Yeah, but a mover through that uh, re uh, restart procedure, Sidney Hude is uh, now in fourth place and challenging for a podium. There is the... So she's got a lap back guard. through that, uh, that safety car. She's got the lap back. OK, yes. So had fallen a lap behind, remember, with the, with the out-lap drama falling into the gravel uh, at turn one, straight from the pit lane, and she will have really got the bit between her teeth since then. Very annoyed, I'm sure, with that error, and is pressurising, as you say, in the M racing car, Lewis Stern in the Pegasus racing car. Well, for the first time in this race, she's now able to actually execute her pace to a meaningful potential result, and she's done so, done so very rapidly. Through comp, the leading trio, it's two and a half minutes to go, so it'll be this lap and one more, I believe, Johnny. Roman Fahl with half a second uh, on Theo uh, Mercurius, then poor Pedro, Pedro Moreno, I mean, dominated this race, is a further second or so behind. Chunting Chu in Aguilera, Ica Segre, and then in uh, JS2R, it is Noda Kuna from David Cusanel, Louis Stern under pressure for the final podium position from Sidney Gude, and it's that gap that is the smallest of that leading pack. Eco Segre with a long look up the inside of Ian Aguilera and is still trying to make that work, that to move stick. So the number six car looking rather racy at this stage. Team Virage, is that Alain Gishev who's also involved in the 32? It certainly is, but uh, that car, no, is a lap down. Lap down, but looking yes. to recover. But uh, still, nevertheless, posing a slight problem in in fact for Aline Fulger who is there in the smart driving car on the lead lap and Fulger unfortunately for him has a very quick Aline Gushev immediately ahead which won't appear on the results sheet next to smart driving's machine the number three so Fulger needs to clear Gushev as quickly as possible and then can start to attack Eco Segre for position on the road a minute left 26 laps completed for Roman Favre. He still only has a lead of three and a half tenths, though, over Theo Mercuris, who's right closer. on his rear bumper now. This is closer. And is this going to be last lap dramas? Through they come, the final through the final turn to start one, I think. He's going to be the last lap, Johnny. He's under a minute to go on the clock. It does look to be about this, this pair. Final lap is confirmed. Curious, or oh, he thought about the inside line into the first corner there, but has to be going to the outside line because Favre parked the car right in the middle of the racetrack. That may well have put Roman Favre out of his rhythm, though, because Mercurius now trying the unconventional racing line. Does that leave the door open on the exit of three? Not quite for Theo Mercurius. And of course, Mercurius having to attack and defend at the same time all over the curb, but needs to be wary of the whereabouts of Pedro Moreno in the closing corners of this hour-long race. Who is closing on this pair in the middle part of this lap? Without a doubt, these cars can race each other, can't they? And it's all of a sudden, it's a train of three. Is it going to be a first win in JSP for, for Inter Europol? Or is it going to be yet another win for Team Virage? Bit wide there, squirrely rear end on the number seven. So he come through. The tail out, isn't he? The Frenchman shows how hard he's having to drive this car. But it's worked, he's just gapped them a little here. Is it going to be enough, Johnny? Polish flag team, Tim Virage, although with strong ties to Valencia in Spain, that's where I understand the cars are kept in between races. And the Spanish-Algerian Julien Gerby as the co-owner as well, watching on with Tony Wells as the cars now work their way out of the right-hander at Turn 12. Well, one more stab at this for Leo Mercurius and potentially 
for Pedro Moreno, but Roman Favre is very good on the exit of turn 13. Into 14 they will go, and Favre has managed to fend off both cars to take the first win of the year in heat one of the Ligier European Series. It's Roman Favre, and look what that means to those associated with Inter-Europol competition. Fabulous stuff, and we'll talk about that uh, move that got in that place in just a little while as we wait for the back of JS to ours to come to the end of the race two. It is a decent lead here for Noda Kuna. It's going to be the, the Le Desarbe car. Here it comes, number 50 car, head of the pair of Pegasus racing cars. We're fended off at the moment, Cindy Gouday, who's right there in fourth. And it's going to be a run to the line with Gouday looking to get by, but it's not quite going to make it. What was the gap at the finish? 0.159 of a second. So no de Kuna from David Cusinel and Louis Stern. Cindy Gouday almost made it back. Well, she's a multiple French hill climb champion for a reason, and uh, some of the YouTube footage I was watching from on board her hill climbing cars yesterday looked absolutely electric. And the difficulty, I suppose, for her is whether she could translate that onto a racing circuit into racing cars, but it certainly suggests her early pace suggests she can absolutely do that and just misses out on a podium by a couple of tenths. So a first win in the Legio European Series for into Europol competition, they've got a fine history on this ELMS package, and they add another chapter today, and that came courtesy, Johnny, of a faultless overtaking manoeuvre uh, from Roman Favre at the restart. Yeah, all about the positioning of the car, all about the timing, though, as well, of hitting that loud pedal at the crucial point and getting a very good run on Pedro Moreno, who, it's fair to say, did not get the ideal restart, maybe just having to hang back slightly uh, behind the safety car that then retreated to pit road and it's all about your exit speed out of 14 and the butterfly effect all the way down the main straight the toe will help though of course as well and uh, worked to perfection by Roman Favre the 19 year old Frenchman so he'll head into pit road as our first winner of the season indeed and Antoine Lopescu of course needs to be mentioned as part of the effort for the number 50 car laid the foundations in the JS Tomar winning car that Noah de Kuna was able to build upon and came home comfortably in the lead of that class. Good race to start and uh, good clean racing as well. Remember, you know, these are some of the less experienced men and women in this paddock and showed a number of them, Johnny, the way to do it and do it without contact. Two safety cars mean we only get to 28 laps, but Roman Favre wins it by 0.4 of a second over Thea Mercuris and Hayden Chance. It's Yaronimo Berrio and Pedro Moreno, the closing driver, the, who will make the podium, the Colombian combination. Shooting Shoe and James Winslow, fourth ahead of Ian Aguilera and Ico Segre. In JS2R, Le Dussabs, Noé de Cunha sharing with Antoine Lupescu, win from the two Pegasus entries of number 29, Julien Schell and David Cosinel, and Lewis Stern in the number 18 car will be on the podium as well. So we got going again, uh, at, well, for the first time indeed, after the safety car began the race for the first seven minutes or so. A little bit of a lock-up from the race leader into Turn 1 because tyres... And brakes were still cold this early in the morning and after very little uh, higher speed running, there was a slight off for uh, Sita Van Mert in the Le Dussab car. And she did exactly the right thing as per the driver's briefing to take to the escape road. Hip and shoulder stuff working their way through turn nine in the early green flag racing laps and a tidy overtake there from Julianne Schell in the JS2Rs at turn five. Shell getting by Clement Moreno with the uh, gnashing teeth on the front of his car with the paint scheme. Not going to uh, misplace that through the course of the year. Also side by side into turn number one on Sita Van Mert later on in the race. Nice little dice as well in the early stages between Ben Kaisley and the 32 car of Lucas Medina. Those two were hard at it all the way through their stint pretty much. And thankfully, not taking chunks out of one another. They were door handle to door handle for most of it. Matteo Pianazzola with no warning whatsoever into retirement for Iron Links by LR Motorsports. So that means we did not see his teammate, Gregorio Bertocco. Hopefully, later in the day, the Italian will get a, dr a drive. 
Medina with a slight off-track moment down at turn seven as well, indicative of difficulties for the number 32 car. The restart was quite strange in that the JS2Rs were at the front of it, although they weren't leading the race. No wave buys in this championship, so JS2R starting immediately behind the safety car, but look further back for Logan Hanna, unfortunately for her, losing out on the race lead to the Virage cars and to Roman Favre in the inter europol competition car. Eventually, Favre would get his way to the front of the order and start to make the gap. This was a big mistake from Clement Moreno on the brakes. Unless something broke on the car, we'll have to discover that afterwards. But the 31 car ending in the kitty litter and down at turn number one, which would throw the race well and truly open within JS2R. Eventually, the victory going the way of Antoine Lepesca and his co-driver Noé de Cunha. And what about this for a fight in JSP4? because into Europol competitions, Roman Favre had to fend off both Theo Mercuris and the second Virage car of Pedro Moreno, and he did that expertly well to be the first winner in the JSP4s. JS2R, it's the 50 car that takes victory, Noé de Cunha bringing the car to the line, and Antoine Lupescu setting the foundations in his 25-minute stint to kick things off. It's going to be a very good season in the Ligier European Series. So, what we do know, Graham, for the, for the next uh, season or so, is that uh, I think there are going to be several different cars and drivers that could win races. Cracking stuff from the whole field, I thought, and uh, there's clearly learning points for some, but lots of pace and good racing in both classes. Yeah, so another race for these cars later on today. Remember, after the lunch break, stay tuned for that. And indeed, for the rest of the day, we have Le Mans Cup and European Le Mans Series qualifying to come on Saturday. Bye for now.
Sí. Ok. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Barcelona. Welcome to the podium. We are about to start the celebration of the, our ceremony from Ligie European Series. The first podium. It's overall. AS, uh, JS, uh, P4, overall. It's okay? The third, in the third place, number 66 from Poland, Jerónimo Berrio. Ahí está el colombiano con Pedro Moreno. The second place, number one, Tim Viraz from Poland. Hayden Chains, Theo Mikoris. Okay. Congratulations. And the winner, number seven, Inter Europol competition, Poland, Roman Fabre. Pour les pilotes français, Roman Fabre, el team. Winner team, Interpol European competition. Ahí tenemos representación de the winner team Inter Europol competition. Congratulations in honor of the winner. Let's listen the national anthem on of Poland. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. The national anthem from Poland. The honor of the winner. The photo. Now the winner, JSP Ford Pro Am, number 32, Tim Birash, Lucas Medina, Alim Joseph. Congratulations, category pro -am, number 32, Tim Virash, Lucas Medina from Colombia, and Ali Joseph, the winner. Applause, please. Thank you.
Finish the first podium, JS P4 and overall and GS P4 Pro Am. The new trophies and uh, another category, JS 2R overall. It's okay. In third place, JS 2R, overall number 18, Pegasus Racing, Louis Stern from France. In second place, 99, Pegasus Racing, Julien Schell and David Cousanel. And the winner, JS2R, overall, number 50, Luz de Arbres, Antoine Lepesque, Noé da Cunha. Congratulations. In honor of the winners, let's listen to the national anthem of France. Ok, félicitations pour l'équipe française. Son euh, la Marseillaise. Ready for photo. In the first race in the new season 2024. After the winner, JS Tour. Pro Am, after Am. The team. Okay, number 18, Pegasus Racing. Podium JS2R Pro Am category. The winner, number 86, Le De Sabras, Sita Van Mert, and Jax Nicolet. Sita from Belgium, Jax uh, Sur Francais. The winner, JS2R Pro Am. Congratulations, applause. And Bibendum de Michelin. Welcome. Let him, let him, the team. Also in podium, Le Deux Abras.
the new trophies and after the last the last podium the first race okay JS Tour um the winner number 29 Pegasus Racing Julian Shell David Cusanel And the team and the team Pegasus Racing number 29 the winner JS Tour um Okay, congratulations. All the winner is the the first the first race after the day the tomorrow. No. Ligier, Ligier European series. Final the first race after the second. The second today.